with us. We start with the coaching merry-go-round. Maguire to three or four is fascinating too. But Port Adelaide, Sam, you believe there's potentially some movement ahead in the coming weeks? I do, Hutchie. I think while all eyes have quite rightly been on Damien Hardwick, given what's happened the last few weeks, and he jets off uh, this week again. He's been in the US previously, now goes to Europe for three weeks. We'll come back and decide his future. For mine, Ken Hinckley and Port Adelaide are just as interesting. Now, we know that Port Adelaide have been strong with their intentions publicly, that they will wait until August until they either decide to re-sign Ken Hinckley or potentially move on and part ways. My understanding is that there is movement afoot behind the scenes, that there are machinations towards uh, Port Adelaide believing that Ken Hinckley is the right man to move forward with beyond this season. I've spoken to David Kosh, of course, uh, the chairman of the Port Adelaide Football Club tonight. He denies that, says no negotiations have taken part. They said August, they'll stay with August. No contract has been offered. But my opinion, Craig, is that Port Adelaide are forming a view that Ken Hinckley is the right man to move on with. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean he stays there. There is a fair bit of this to play out in Ken's hands. And, look, uh, there's a lot of talk around Damien Hardwick and the Gold Coast Suns. I understand that. Terrible timing to have a loss like that for Stuart Jew. I don't think rule out Ken Hinckley from the Gold Coast job either at this point. Kane, if he gets offered two years by Port in the coming weeks, which is the tip around town, do you think that he'll take it? I do, Hutchie, and I think that's the right move. I think he coaches Port Adelaide next year. That wasn't my belief at the start of the year. That is my belief now. The August time frame has made it interesting for them because who would have thought that they'll finish top four? So the prospect of then not making a call after you've said that and going back on your word would be too disruptive ahead of finals. I think he signs and he's offered a two-year deal and that will happen. It feels about right for both parties. I think think it's perfect. He he deserves it. Uh, I think he would be happy with a two-year contract and he should be rewarded for that and I think it gives you some certainty heading into the finals. So, Lloydie, what happens if, devil's advocate here, Port Adelaide go to Ken Hinckley in August and they're approaching a really important finals campaign and say, this is our offer, and Ken says, well, I want to think about it. You know, let's get to the end of the finals campaign. But does that have the potential to disrupt? Uh, he's fully entitled to do what he wants, but I think Ken also has to think about um, what the next six weeks is going to be. They, they may never get a greater opportunity than what they're going to get this year to, to win a premiership. And um, at the end of the day, he does what's best for him. They've made him wait. He should do what's right for him. But I agree, if it's two years, you just take it. And uh, what a young, good good group of... Boke and Wines are just role players, aren't they? And Dixon. So why would you want to leave Port Adelaide right now? And there's Harbuck in the background. And clearly, if that job became available, he'd sweep on it. He'd be the perfect... That would be the perfect fit for him, probably. Port Adelaide. Hardwick, yeah, which is unlikely. Uh, you look back now, three wins out of four. Richmond with momentum. Uh, Damon Hardwick almost predicted this at the time. I made the fatal mistake of watching The Last Dance, I think, on, on Fox. It was at some stage and thought why it may have been. But once I decided that that part of the equation started to, to slip away, then I started to question myself time for a different voice you know I've pushed every button I can I've tried to cook the sausages a thousand different ways and I couldn't find a thousand and one so I think the players deserve a new voice that will hopefully give them that spark to hopefully lead to something that could be pretty special this year. Four weeks on and they're two points out of the eight Richmond won three of their last four and there's no doubt that the new fresh voice of Andrew McWalter has probably given them this opportunity like when he left we all believe that they're just gone it's the end of it um, no one's saying they're going to win a premiership, but suddenly it's just an amazing opportunity for the next coach uh, to coach Richmond. And the players like Dustin Martin and Trent Cochin, they seem rejuvenated with McWalter at the helm. And who knows if another job comes available? Who knows if, for argument's sake, Clarkson doesn't want to go back to North and a young coach might fit them. Like, McWalter gets interesting and Richmond yeah. don't take him too, which is the other and part and of all this. One yeah. more point yep. on Hardwick. He also, by leaving when he did, gives himself the chance to have a great break but still be in the mix to coach a team next year. So I think that's what he's done. If he wants to coach somebody next year, um, he's at least had a four-month break.